service, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Reading from Exodus. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Moses said to Jethro, the Lord Flames of fire blazing out of the middle of the bush. He looked. 
The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush. Moses, Moses. He said, yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know all about their pain. And now I've come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt. Get them out of that country and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces, a land lush with milk and honey. The land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. This great Israelite cry for help has come to me, and I'm seeking for myself how cruelly they've been treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses answered God, but why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I'll be with you, God said, and this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. Then God said to Moses, Suppose I go to the people of Israel and I tell them, The God of your father sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? What do I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent me to you. God continued with Moses, This is what you are to say to the Israelites. God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I will always be known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105. Hallelujah. Thank God. Pray to God by name. Tell everyone you meet what God has done. Sing him songs. Spell out hymns. Translate his wonders into Honor his holy name with hallelujahs. You who seek God, live a happy life. Keep your eyes open for God. Watch for his works. Be alert for signs of his presence. Remember the world of wonders he has made, his miracles and the verdicts he's rendered. O seed of Abraham, his servant, O child of Jacob, his chosen. Then Israel entered Egypt. Jacob immigrated to the land of Ham. God gave the people lots of babies. Soon their numbers alarmed their foes. He turned the Egyptians against his people. They abused and cheated God's servants. Then he sent his servant Moses and Aaron, who he also chose. Hallelujah. A reading from Romans. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled in a flame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't put in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share cheers when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with no buddies. Don't be in great somebody. Don't get back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in your get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch, or if he's thirsty, get a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. 
Get the best of evil by doing good. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed, and then on the third day be raised up alive. Peter took him in hand, protesting, impossible, Master, that can't ever be. But Jesus didn't swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You've got no idea how God works. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to finding your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want, but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all the splendor of his Father, accompanied by an army of angels. You'll get everything you have coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky by and by. Some of you standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man in kingdom glory. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Lord God, may only your word be spoken and may only your word be heard. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So oh, happy Labor Day Sunday. Uh, so uh, several decades ago, before I went to seminary, and this is sort of a, not a trope, but it's not uncommon in the lives of people who end up going to seminary. Um, my dad had just died, and I, I went through a period of time when I was really struggling with feeling depression and wasn't clear. I was sort of in my early 20s at that point in time about what to do and where was I gonna go with my life. Because when you have a, a serious loss at any time of your life, it really sort of knocks you, knocks you back for a while. You, know, you can't just keep on going forward the way that everybody around you seems to be able to do. And I was having lunch one day. It was nice. A, a father of a good friend of mine from childhood asked me out to lunch, I think, because he saw that I was sort of struggling and floundering and just wanted to sort of, you know, reach out. And I remember we were having lunch. And it was funny because we went, he was a businessman in New York and we went into the um, Yale club and at those clubs in New York, you have to wear a tie. And of course I showed up without a tie. So I think to sort of get people back at those places, they have the ugliest possible ties to give people inside, wearing this ugly tie like a clown or something like that. So we're sitting at lunch and asking, he was asking how I was thinking about what my next step was was going to be in life. And I remember sort of just feeling like I didn't know. I was fed up with talking about it. I said, oh, you know, I'll figure out something next. It doesn't really matter. You know, I'll figure it out. And it, he stopped at that moment. He said, no, it does matter. It matters a lot what your next step is. And I can't remember what he said next. But that message really has, has stuck with me through the years. And at that moment, he sort of intervened and said, no, it matters. You know, don't sell the importance of your own life and your own journey short it does matter so pay attention to it and, and sort of you know embrace it and recognize its importance and i wanted to start with that story today because throughout the both the old testament reading and the gospel reading is is this same theme with both moses and jesus about what you do in your life matters. Um, and, you know, so often we hear these stories in the Bible and the idea that goes through a lot of people's heads is that these stories are, hap are stories that happen to someone else and so it doesn't necessarily affect us or maybe it does. But these stories are supposed to be stories about us. They're supposed to be stories about the dynamics of, of our lives. So look at, at it's really interesting in the Contemporary translation gets it really well in this story about Exodus. So uh, Moses is, is, you know, Moses, since we last heard about him last week when he got bored and put into the, into the little 
sort of container in the, in the river, um, Moses has grown up. Um, he has seen the mistreatment that his people are suffering from, and he's become infuriated about that. And he actually has killed an Egyptian soldier out of rage. And then realizing that he's broken the law, he's fled. And you can say, you know, you can see here he's, he's shepherding the flock of his father-in-law at the sort of west end of the wilderness, way out there where the Egyptian patrols aren't going to go and pick him up and, and throw him in jail or, or kill him in retribution. So he's run for his life. And he's gotten married in the meantime, settled down a little bit. And all of a sudden, there's this burning bush. And there's a two-word sentence. He looked. He looked, and he's, you know, seeing this bush blazing, and it's not being burned up. And God, you know, he says, what's going on here? And then God looks. Moses looks, i.e., he cares about the present moment that he's in. He doesn't blow it off. He doesn't say, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever, a burning bush. You see all kinds of garbage out here in the desert. I'm a long way from where it matters. He looks. He cares. And then God looks. And then God says, I've taken a good long look at what's going on with your people back there. All this, this passage is saturated with people not blowing off the present moment and not taking it seriously. They're bought in. They're, they're invested. They care about what's really happening. And the story goes on and, you know, Moses, you know, the first thing that, or one thing that often happens when all of a sudden you start taking the present moment seriously is you feel utterly unequipped to deal with it. All of the rationalizations, all of the distractions that we have in our life that we use to sort of not pay attention to the real challenges that face every single one of us, every stage of our lives. It's a little bit too much, right? And so we sort of distract ourselves. I mean, there's a lot on TV nowadays. So, you know, Moses faces it and says, I can't do this. And, you know, we, we haven't heard it by now, but later on we find out Moses stutters. So imagine this, right? It was like, I can't do this. You know, how am I, you know, what's going to, God said, well, tell him I sent you. Who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm this. I am who I am. You know, like that's going to help. So, you know, here's Moses all of a sudden looking and getting that, you know, this is going to be hard work. But he goes ahead and he doesn't. He doesn't turn away. You know, and, and you can read this story in a way where, you know, God saw that Moses had stopped to look. You know, maybe God is just like sitting up there. Maybe God's been flipping the switch and the bush has been going on fire for 15 million people who've walked by. And God's like, is anybody going to notice? Is anybody going to look at how amazing this life is that I've laid in front of everybody? You know, over and over again, you know, with, with the same kind of lighter thing that Hank uses on the candles here, right? right? So he looked. You know, with Jesus, it's a, a similar story. And, the uh, you know, same kind of outcome. Jesus is like, Okay, this is it. I am strong, and I'm going to take on the biggest enemies that this time knows, and I'm going to win. And it's going to hurt. It's not going to be easy. I'm going to suffer in the minute. What's interesting is that if you notice in the story, Jesus doesn't just say, I'm going to die. And Peter goes, oh, no, no, you can't do that. He says, I'm going to die, and then I'm going to rise. And Peter can't take that. You know, he's afraid of the change. I don't know what he's afraid of. But all of a sudden, and, and then Jesus says, no, this is, I have this strength. And again, remember this story, I mean, uh, ostensibly it's about Jesus. This story is about every single one of us. You have strength. You have power. How are you going to use it? Are you going to claim it? Are you going to step into it? It matters. You matter. This moment matters. That's what these stories are, are about. You know, for, for way, way, way too long, I think, you know, Christian people have been saying, okay, as long as you believe that Jesus did it, you're okay. Like, what does that mean? You know, 
you're supposed to say some verbal formula like, I believe Jesus died and rose from the dead, and that's supposed to make life better? No. I mean, I don't, that, I don't know about you all. It doesn't do much for me. I want something in my life. And what God and what these readings are saying here is that, you know, you know it's the, the, the visual equivalent of listen up. Look. Pay attention. Somehow there's something there that God is going to draw you deeper into something that's really good, really cool, really strong. And that's, uh, you know, and really the purpose of, of our church and any church is to help people look and connect up in that kind of way. It's not to repeat the same words over and over and over again. It's to look and really to wake up, really to connect with what matters most. Amen. Let's stand up and affirm our faith and our trust in God by saying together the Nicene Creed whatever it is in here. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace. We pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the Gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Carly, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in the Church special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For Shalama's new apartment here in town. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For everybody who's died in the fires in Hawaii and in the fires in the floods in Florida. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No, no, no. Things done and left done. And so all of us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the fullness of life. To the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your <laughs> sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of God's Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And for everybody here, and I think we've got Carol and who else is there with us online? Hanya. And Hanya. Awesome. Uh, everybody here, everybody online, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Peace. All right, we got the, uh, the announcement team is back. Yeah, so one of the things that we discussed throughout the year and we're working on being better on throughout the year is stewardship. Um, it's coming back up to stewardship season again, but stewardship isn't just one point in time. It's throughout the church year. You gonna run? Where are you going? She wants the iPad. She does, yeah. So in the back, um, the more than enough campaign that, we were, that we've been utilizing throughout stewardship season, there is a late summer Pentecost conjuring momentum in slowness. So it's a good read for you to read that continues talking about our stewardship season that we were in and will be coming up to again. Do you have any announcements? No? Just that you're cute? <laughs> yeah? Are there any other announcements? September is going to be the season of creation. There is a book study program that's coming up the first. It goes for six Thursdays for an hour on Zoom. And it uh, goes along with a, a very, very good book. I read a sample chapter of it, and it reads like a, a novel, which is pretty amazing for uh, somebody who likes Christians. It helps. And uh, if anybody's interested, uh, I can make sure that, that you get the information in the book and see if you want to buy it and, and, and spend an, an hour of your time on Thursdays in, in discussion with this book. So, I think it's quite excellent. I mean, if, if, if the part that they give you to read, which is about 20 pages, is as good as the whole book, which is almost 200 pages, uh, it's going to be well worth reading. Actually, I have one which is uh, so next Sunday I will not be here, but the following Sunday I will, and that's the uh, 17th. When I think we're going to do a, are we going to do the blessing of the backpacks? That? I believe that's the date I have to double check. Okay. So at yeah. some point coming soon, we're going to be doing a blessing of backpacks for kids going back to school. Um, and and, uh, and uh, reusable grocery bags also, right? Since the podcast right. doesn't do plastic anymore, which is good. So. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so uh, and also on the 17th, right after church, um, I'm going to be leaving with anybody who'd like to go to go into the Climate March in New York. So we'll have, um, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll send some information since I'll be away next, next Sunday, yep. um, send some information about that. So um, that's that. Let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us and offering and sacrifice pleasing to God.
we'll continue with Eucharistic prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It's right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you're the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. By thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The body is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. <coughs>
let's take now a, a minute in silent meditation and prayer together. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you, in gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. God's blessing, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life, be upon you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 383.